Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, in the room and online at this press conference at the 48th annual meeting of the World Economic Forum. We are delighted and honored to have Mr. Enrique Mereles, Brazil's Minister of Finance. Earlier today, President Timmer struck an upbeat note and stated that Brazil is back in business. We look forward to hearing your perspective, Minister. Well, thank you. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here uh, at the forum. It's a very positive moment for Brazil. Uh, we came here uh, last year uh, when we met uh, participants, investors, and uh, authorities in general uh, looking favorably at the perspective of the change and the improvement in the Brazilian economy. We were still coming out of the deepest recession in Brazilian history, which took place in 2015-2016. Fortunately, uh, the evolution of the reforms which are being conducted and approved and implemented in Brazil is going very well. And as a result of that, the economy has already recovered. Brazil last year was able to grow at an, a rate compared to the previous year of about 1, 1.1%, 1 and uh, created uh, about 1.4 million uh, new jobs. Uh, the, the, the people are encouraged by the uh, developments in the economy and their recovery and so on and so forth. Then they are also joining the job market, looking for jobs. Then the unemployment itself falls a little bit less because of the new entrants, which is good news. And we are expecting to have uh, more than 2.5 million new jobs created in the year 2018. Uh, our expectation for GDP growth rate in 2018 is uh, about 3%, uh, which is above what is still being projected uh, by many analysts who are getting closer to that number. There is an evolution throughout the year. Uh, the number at some point uh, was at uh, had reached 2.5, came down at 2%, the projection for 2018, market now is getting uh, closer to 3%, uh, moving steadily towards that number. Uh, in summary, uh, the Brazilian economy is uh, performing well. Uh, the result of, this is the result of a series of uh, reforms which were approved in Brazil. The first one was uh, cap in the growth of government spending, which is going to create a crowding in of the private sector in the economy for investment consumption. The government in 10 years' time would come from 20% of the total GDP federal government to about 15%. That's a very powerful incentive for investment, consumption, and growth in the economy. Uh, foreign investment is increasing as domestic one. There is uh, a healthy increase in the rate of investment in the country. We have the numbers for the third quarter when there was a growth of 8% investment in machinery and equipment uh, in, in, in Brazil. Uh, in summary, uh, the, the economy not only is recovering, but there is also a series of steps which are being taken in order to increase the trend for the future. Uh, for instance, there was the approval of a labor reform, uh, which modernized the job market and the, the whole system in a way that that would improve productivity and increase uh, uh, in due time, the creation of jobs. Uh, the economy will be more flexible, and as a result, uh, we expect to have even higher growth in the future. There are other reforms as well, like uh, uh, 
uh, some important change in the credit market, which it would also help, uh, and that would provide a better allocation of uh, uh, investment into the more productive areas and companies of the economy, uh, and, and that is, is also very important. And there is, at the same time, uh, a, a strong effort regarding the cut in red tape throughout the country. To give an idea, in the city of Sao Paulo, we are decreasing the number of days which it took to open or close a company in the city from 120 days to about seven and then five, <coughs> and eventually three. In summary, there is a series of reforms which aim at the end of the day to have a, a moment uh, when in the next years we'll have the trend rate in Brazil, which uh, demographically adjusted uh, was at 2%, uh, going up, and we expect it after all these reforms to be at around between anything between 3.5 and 4 percent, the trend rate of the GDP growth for next years. There is a very important reform being voted in Brazil now, which is the pension reform, when we are reforming the social security system. We expect it to be voted now, in February, next month, and also this would be a very important step forward towards uh, balancing uh, not only balancing uh, the budget in, in the future, but also creating a fairer system uh, in which uh, the lower level uh, income uh, persons would have uh, the same uh, rights and the same conditions as higher salaries, uh, which uh, the social security system today is somewhat bias towards a uh, higher salary for a variety of reason that is being uh, corrected uh, with the new uh, uh, social security system which is being again proposed to congress besides uh, modernizing the system and adjusting for the demographic changes in brazil throughout the next uh, last years in summary there is a whole range of reforms being implemented in Brazil, and uh, that is already uh, showing its results. So business confidence is up, consumer confidence is up, the economy is growing. Uh, now, this year, a solid pace, and we expect it, uh, again, to be uh, keeping this pace during the next couple of years, and then eventually uh, in increasing somewhat that rate as a result of the productivity reforms. That's about the summary of what I would like to say. Wonderful. I would like now to open the floor in case there's any questions from the audience. Uh, the lady <coughs> in front, please state your name and your organization. Celia Frove, Broadcast um, Group Estado. I've heard from you and um, other Brazilian authorities that there is an interest, a big interest in, on Brazil this year, especially this year. Um, there is also optimism, but uh, what you can see earlier was the during the uh, Mr. President's speech, the room was not uh, so full. Mm -hmm. How can you explain that for me? There, there is an interest, mm -hmm. really. No, I think that uh, it's, it's, it's normal. I think that the, 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 the speech of the president was very well received. The feedback I got from several uh, members uh, of uh, the audience and the ones who saw uh, from a distance uh, by the, the transmission, uh, on, and they uh, basically uh, I stated, and I got that from several different sources, uh, investors, uh, uh, entrepreneurs, uh, businessmen, authorities, that uh, the speech of the president was very well received in the sense that it uh, provided a very clear direction of uh, to where the country is going and uh, how uh, that is evolving in Brazil and the Brazilian commitment to keep uh, this direction. Uh, 
for the future. Uh, again, uh, with all the, the electronic transmission uh, systems and, and channels of today, it's normal that not every room uh, is full because people can uh, watch and see and listen uh, from a distance. Hello, Minister. This is Vivian Rodriguez with Bloomberg. Um, I wanted to bring uh, the discussion to a very specific point, and this point is the question of the transfer of rights on Petrobras and the federal government. Earlier today, we spoke with Minister Coelho here, who said that he's close to coming to some sort of common ground between the company and the government. But I'm wondering, which camp do you follow? If you, the Minister Diego Oliveira says that we need money and we were going, Petrobras needs to pay us, whereas Petrobras is saying we need to get the oil ourselves. So in, in where does the finance ministry stand into this dispute right now? Well, uh, there is a negotiation going on. Uh, what we have is, is a positive development in the sense that more oil was uh, found and discovery. And there is a discussion evidently now uh, between the Treasury and the Petrobras uh, of how to settle that because the way uh, that agreement was um, defined in the past was not precise. But uh, we are having a very good uh, cover group uh, series of conversations with the president of Petrobras. Actually, we had a meeting even last week in Brasilia. And I am sure that in due time, we will reach a good agreement. Evidently, that Treasury indeed uh, is expecting uh, to uh, receive a good uh, uh, compensation from Petrobras for all the new oil fields and all of that. But again. Uh, I think that the question is to be uh, here on a fair ground. And if I can, just to follow up also, because bringing back Minister Diogo Oliveira, who mentioned that there could be what we say in Portuguese, contingenciamento, right, a contingency coming very soon. I mean, of how much that would be, I mean, uh, in how, when could we expect that to take place? Well, we don't have that number. Uh, the contingenciamento means uh, the fact that uh, if for some reason the expenses are higher than what is in the budget, what is uh, expected or uh, set by the ceiling on uh, growth of government spending. For instance, uh, the government can basically cut uh, either horizontally or selectively uh, the budget uh, area by area. And, and basically what uh, we are saying is that if there is a need that will be done. Uh, we have not determined at this point uh, any specific amount. There are some uh, important points which are under decision now. For instance, there is a decision on the Supreme Court about the postponement or not of uh, the increase in salaries of civil servants, for instance. Uh, there, is other, there are other decisions uh, which are going to be taken by Congress when it's, uh, again, uh, resume now the, the legislative work by February, uh, like the taxation uh, on uh, the payroll, for instance, of corporations and et cetera, that after some time it, it, uh, the taxation works uh, in that specific case, not only to increase the revenues, but only also to decrease expenses by Treasury, because Treasury reimburses the Social Security system for part of that lost ever revenue in case there is no such a payroll tax. In summary, uh, there are several projects going on. What the minister is basically saying is, uh, we are prepared. If it's necessary, we will have that adjustment in the budget, which actually it did take place in the year 2017. There was the so-called contingenciamento in the years 2017, and if necessary, that would be done again. A gentleman had a question in the front. Assis uh, Moreira, Valor Econômico São Paulo. Minister, you had uh, some uh, meetings with uh, businessmen. Uh, could you just elaborate a little bit, uh, summarize if there is any new investment announced uh, for Brazil 
after the during these uh, meetings? Well, well, the projected total foreign direct investment for Brazil in the year 2018 is projected by finance ministry at $88 billion in the year 2018. Uh, the forecast for what took place in 2017 uh, is about $75 billion. It's a forecast because the final number was not still published by the central bank. Uh, in summary, this is what we are expecting and all the conversations we are having with investors and business which have uh, already uh, worked in Brazil uh, are confirming that. It's it, that there is uh, a growing confidence that the Brazilian economy is uh, growing and will keep growing during the next years according to our projections. In summary, uh, it's a confirmation basically of the numbers uh, we uh, are projecting for the year uh, 2018. It's again uh, GDP growth rate projected at 3% versus 1% last year and versus a contraction in 2015 and 16 of about 8% of GDP. Then it's a strong recovery and, and companies are already uh, betting on that. I'd like to see if there's one more question from the room. I wish you could talk a little bit about Electrobras. I mean, <laughs> the minister today, I'm just basically chatting, having two ministers to chat through me here today. So the um, Minister of Energy said that he wants to go through with the sale of Electrobras, the sale yes, of shares, absolutely. the primary offer, very soon, this semester yes. first. And that the government's objective is to try to raise to 12 billion reais, yes. that was the estimate. Do you think this is manageable? I mean, giving all that's going on, just to, to get the regulation plus the, the pension reform plus the elections, right? Can we actually see this taking place until June? Yeah, I think that it's, 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 it's uh, viable, yes. Uh, the pension reform, we expect it, as I said, to be voted now in February. And after that, we have still uh, several months of uh, have a work uh, by Congress before uh, we get to a full electoral campaign after the holiday in July. In summary, still, uh, I think that there is uh, uh, plenty of time for that to be voted and discussed. It's a very important project. Uh, it's, uh, I think, as important for Brazil as uh, uh, it was the privatization of the telecommunication system in the 90s. Uh, I mean, private capital will be investing in Brazil. It's a very important sector. Now, with demand growing, we expect really uh, to, to see investments coming uh, in, into those uh, projects, not only necessarily hydroelectric, but in, in several, uh, several other uh, sectors. In summary, uh, we are uh, working hard toward that direction, and uh, it's a good project. It's a solid one. The the uh, the company will uh, basically uh, cap be capitalized with new capital, uh, increasing uh, the amount of resources the company has for investment, etc. And that would also come with a change in the management and governance structure of uh, the company uh, becoming a company which is independently managed, et cetera. Uh, and I think that we, that would be uh, market friendly and we think it would attract much more investment for the country, for the electricity sector, and uh, a better management of the Brazilian resources. On that ambitious note, I would like to first thank the audience in the room and online for joining us for this press conference, and of course, Minister Mareles, thank you very much. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here.